All right, in this video, we're gonna be adding 30 amp outlet for the RV or for the motorhome. All right, this is gonna be the main panel. Range and AC. It's got the main 200 amp breaker right there. You can see all these breakers are gonna be GE. And you can see down at the bottom, there's gonna be a lot of different knockouts. But something about these knockouts, when water gets in here, sometimes it drops into your conduit. So we're gonna to try to use this side knockout. It's gonna be one and three eighths, and that's what fits a one inch conduit. All right, so on the knockouts, I'm just trying to bend this one inch piece out. It works on metal fatigue. You just gotta keep going back and forth. So I'm gonna put this one inch fitting in there. We're gonna be converting it to conduit PVC. I'm gonna leave the rubber on the outside. If you notice, this piece has a red bushing in here to protect from fraying or rubbing. I'm just cutting a piece of one inch conduit to get past the fence. And I always say go a little bit longer than you should. So I'm gonna go maybe about three foot. While I'm cutting this, I'm gonna show you what plan A was. These are all the materials I gathered up for the first attempt. Just gonna throw in this 30 amp and 20 amp breaker into the panel. Come out the panel with some metal, convert it to PVC, connect all this, run, all, run this under the overhang and put 12-2 and 10-2 in the conduit. Probably use couplers instead of uh, the quick connectors. Screw it, clamp it, come back down, get into the 30 amp box, and then pass through and run a 20 amp GFCI. And after showing this to a friend, he told me not to run Romex outdoors inside conduit. I guess it's some kind of code thing. Go put this piece in. So take this cover off. There's the eight mil or flat tip right here. And then this ground wire was bonded to this high sixteenths or eight mil. I just took it off so it's easier to work with. On the 30 amp box, you can see this knockout's gonna be the whole thing. Once you get the edges bent up a little bit, it's gotta wiggle it. It's gonna build up some heat and fail. I'm gonna cut this old PVC. Get a sharpie out. The AC is screaming right now. Let's shut this thing off. There we go. Three sixteenths by four and a half by quarter for use with quarter. So this is quarter, one and three quarters. There's no way you can get too far into your house where you're like hitting wires or anything. It's just gonna be in the brick. All right, so making the holes in the brick, a hammer drill works the best. You could just leave it on drill, put this bit in, push really hard. And it works pretty good, but if you just put it on hammer, if you have a hammer drill, it'll do all the work for you. We're just checking how deep we went. And that's plenty. You can see most holes did line up. I'm gonna start on the top. I mean, honestly, that one bolt is plenty. All 
All right, it's gonna be running eight gauge stranded. I'm gonna try to use the auto stripper. Let's see how good it works. If you can see right there, it actually says white. White into that port. I don't like I don't like electricity. Switch off? No. Later I'm gonna shut it off for right here. Be careful. On these I snipped them where I think they're gonna work about they're gonna rub the edge a little bit, but they're gonna have pressure going into the screws or into the bus bar. Probably gonna go a little bit extra on these. Even more. Oh no. Tug test. Make sure it's off. We did turn the AC back on. It's been getting hot. You see this kind of like V pattern? Fits right on that lug. So you always want to start on the outside. Make sure you're locked in. Get it on there. One quick movement. See all this looks pretty good. All right, so last night when I was in that panel, the main thing I was trying to do is make sure all the wires were stripped to the right length and all the screws are really tight. Then I checked power from line to ground and then line to neutral, and they both showed about 122, I believe, 123. And really, if you look at this, it's a regular outlet. So if I take this outlet, put it like this, line's gonna be on the brass side, neutral's gonna be on the, the long side, the silver side. So it's really just a regular outlet just turned upside down. And also remember I put the ground and the neutral on the same bus bar in the main breaker. And this is the panel I have in my garage. No main disconnect, it's a sub panel. Another thing, you can see the letter D on all these. So these are gonna be square D breakers. So this whole panel is gonna be square D. And that's important. No matter what kind of panel you have, what kind of breakers you need. So it is possible to knock out one of these, drop down, cut a hole in the drywall and mount the box somewhere, somewhere here on the stud. So then there's going to be a cable hanging out the garage. See right now I'm plugged into a 20 amp GFCI in the garage. Then the adapter and then the 30 amp cable. Let's see it powers up everything. The AC's on. The bridge is on. 
And this wire has been running for about an hour in the shade in the garage. You can definitely tell it's warming up and it's pretty thick 12 gauge wire. That's another reason why it's good to run a 30 amp circuit. So now we gotta connect this outlet to the motorhome. We got something delivered. It's gonna be 30 amp, 125 volt, 10 gauge wire with one leg hot, 50 foot long. Feels pretty snug. And it almost closes all the way. These handles are trimmable if you want to cut that down. I mean, that's really not that bad. Remember what I got is an RV extension cord. So it's going to be an extension cord. It's going to have this kind of end on it. If you accidentally order the wrong cord, not an extension cord, you get a power cord. You're going to get these markings, which are turning lock. These ones actually go into the motorhome. All right, now we're just going to plug her in. That's pretty snug. heard the AC kick on. Even probably the electric water heater. Turn on the tank heaters too. Hit the slide. Got the TV on. Make sure this thing's cooling. So we got the AC, refrigerator, TV. I think the water pump, electric water heater. Now I'm going to hit start on the microwave. It's looking good. Now on these PVC joints, I didn't glue them. I don't know how permanent this RV outlet is going to be. But you could glue them. You could put silicone all around here. Water tight it. The main reason I use metal here is just so it's a little bit more solid when it connects to the box. Instead of screwing a metal nut onto a plastic uh, fitting. If I ever wanted to remove this, I have to go to the main panel, put a plug. Where we tapped in and then remove these four what are they called tap cons this is where i had three tap cons it just leaves like a nice pretty solid hole you can fill in and just paint them all right so i ended up being pretty happy that my wife talked me out of putting that outlet right here i was going to put the 30 right here put this one right here the 20. the only reason i was going to put this in i was just getting too far ahead of myself i was thinking about doing that 20 amp second ac mod for the bedroom but if I wanted to try that, I could just plug it into the garage. Let's go over how much this cost. All right, so the two rigid metal adapters that go into the boxes, into the knockouts, with that red insulation ring, $7.98 each, 16 bucks. Not necessary, but I think it ends up being a better install. And then two PVC adapters, $2. So on the tap cons, I spent $8 for the bit, 8 pack of screws, and I still have 4 left. The actual 30 amp panel was 56 bucks. Don't worry about that paint. The 1 inch PVC that's 4 foot long, I just cut off of this piece. Normally they're about $9 for a 10 foot piece. The 30 amp breaker was $8. Alright, the actual extension cord came in at $60. If you need it bigger, 75 foot, 130, 25 foot, 36. All right, so I added everything up. It came out to $141. I would estimate the wire to be around 30 bucks for, I think I'm at five or six foot of THHN. I got mine for free. Should be 150 or below to do this project. And this is some pretty good news. These wires are cool to the touch. and It's been running for a while. All right, y'all, hope this video helps you with your own project. Thanks for watching. That one AC has been running for a good hour or two now. So it's pretty good in here. But we are in Texas and it gets really hot. This is a motorhome. So we do have two ACs, but that one just burns too much gas. Y'all know how much gas costs these days.